It's changed your life. It could have been an episode, a person. Well, I have personal circumstances that have changed my life. Talk I don't know if I should go too far in them. Well, if you're comfortable with um, any of them. There's a, there, when I ran away from home, mm -hmm. it was one of the, the most amazing things I've ever done in my life. Because I was a 14-year-old boy, and I knew I was in a bad place, and I knew I was going to get hurt if I stayed there. Yes. And I saw a window, and I just, something clicked, and I was like, you don't have to stay here. And it's been the one thing that has sort of stayed with me home my whole life, is mm -hmm. that if something sucks, you don't have to accept it. That's right. Mm -hmm. And it's a very, very hard lesson to learn at any age in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. But if you can just say, hell no, yeah. get up and walk away. That's right. I was about a year yeah, behind you, even though I'm 100 years older. I was about, I, I left when I was 15. I, I had just to got up. up. Uh -huh, get up, get up. I could not. Uh, that's it's an interesting moment, isn't it? Absolutely. You actually have the courage to stand mm -hmm. up, look around, and be like, whatever. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> and go. Huh. That's cool. Yeah. I'm glad you did that. Mm -hmm. Did I you take to... anything with you? Uh, the cash box. <laughs> 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 and where I have my father's job. Uh, did you take the cash box? Practically. Yeah, because he was an auto body mechanic and had a gas station on the Sunset Strip. That was his whole life. That's why I don't drive, because I was such a rebel. To this day, I refuse to learn how to drive, just because my father and only male, the only other male sibling, my step old stepbrother, were both auto body mechanics. That was their job. So it killed him that I refused to learn how to drive a car. Uh, and I had to work. I ran away from home when I was 15, and because uh, of child abuse. And, uh, and uh, I realized that... Uh, um, what happened? Oh, you know, I took the cash box because I was making me pump gas on the Sunset Strip. You Street. earned it. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I remember I was so nervous running away from home. The first week I was there, I got a little, I got a little uh, a room or a, a room or I think it wasn't even an apartment on Beechwood Drive in the Hollywood Hills. Remember Beechwood Drive? I'm not sure. With a pool job. off of Franklin at the Hollywood Hills, my first place away. From oh, home. I never be from Franklin. And then that night, I didn't, hadn't even defined my sexuality. I went upstairs to, oh, I met a girl at the pool, a woman older woman and she invited me upstairs for a joint or something so I knocked on her door and right at her door right away, I just opened she opened her door as soon as she opened her door she put my head in her titties oh my god, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she dropped me in so, oh my god and then we got eyes oh what and then I was so nervous because I first of all I was on my own that I I smoked a whole carton of cigarettes chain smoked them in my room and then puked black threw up like black <laughs> And got really sick, and then called my mother and said, "Could I come home?" And she said, well, "Do you think you could hold off another couple of weeks?" Yeah, <laughs> Dad doesn't want to. Do it. Yeah, um, carton of cigarettes. Huh? That's pretty disgusting. It was. It was nasty. It was probably good, but the first couple of packs, and uh, then it just got worse. Yeah. Huh. And eventually, I was able. Years later, I was able to forgive them for that and let that go because I realized where they were from. And yeah. it was just a matter of environment. It, they were, you know, cause mm. they, because of an, an, You're an nice education. Person, an education. <laughs> they, had no, they didn't have the education I had. And they were from Missouri. <laughs> and that's why he was so prejudiced. He was an extremely prejudiced and bigoted person. Mm. And I didn't understand Do that. Do you believe that. in forgiveness? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I don't know if I completely agree with you. <laughs> I don't. I don't. I don't hold on to it. I things. say it in a nice way, though. Mm -hmm. I don't get mad. I get even. As a Scorpio. Okay, that works for me. I just said, like, do you believe in revenge? Because <laughs> I do. <laughs> That's a Scorpio. That's one of my traits. I don't get mad. I get even. I think revenge is fucking wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but it can be a silent form of revenge, too. It mm -hmm. can be a, a kind of a revenge where, okay, if this is how you want to play, this is how I'll play, and nothing will transpire. But by nothing transpires... They're not able to. The other person isn't able to. No, nothing play. happens. Nothing yeah. happens. Uh -huh. Again, there's. You don't play the game. Mm -hmm. That's you right. And I'm put doing down that your right chess now. piece. Uh, that was a, the first girl I ever slept with had a sex change. And oh yeah. True. Uh huh. Um, the first and only time I slept with a girl, <laughs> okay. she became a man. That's right. Is that true? Yes, it's absolutely true. Oh my God! You didn't I didn't see the country you like you did, but. Oh okay. You didn't tell me that when I first met you. Big arms. I saw that later. So that's. Cool. I bought her her first trap on. <laughs> you I was did? a supporter, if you know. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> So they've had very similar, similar yeah. lives. Huh. Did you fuck a lesbian? No, but... Okay. <laughs> first girl you slept with was a... Uh, got a sex change. I'm talking yeah. about that. Uh, well, she was a lesbian uh -huh. first. Uh -huh. she has sex well, I guess I probably fucked a lesbian, too, now that I think of it. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I haven't had sex with a woman in so long. I, I actually... In the hippie days, I hadn't really defined...
define my sexuality in the late 60s. And just shortly before the Cockats happened, a year before, I had three girlfriends, one after another after another. Three really? girlfriends in the hippie days, yeah. With real vaginas and stuff? Yeah, the whole the works. And then I wasn't <laughs> with a woman for years and years and years. And then I regretted not being with certain women that had uh -huh. come into my life. And most of them are older women, but not all of them. Mm -hmm. And then I have, to have nothing against women. Uh, I have some of my dearest friends are like, like my sisters, like Fayette and Harlow from the Cockettes. Or, but I've never really had sex with them. They're just like sisters. Yeah. You have to imagine. And then about 20 years ago, uh, I hadn't been with a woman in, God, 30 years or 20 years. Did you make a plunge? Years. No. Uh, we were, me and my boyfriend were seduced by a woman on opium and had a three-way. Oh. Mm -hmm. That doesn't count. <laughs> uh, okay, so we uh, we talked about changing your life. Yes. Yeah, let's go on to tangents. let's go on to. What is your most proud moment? What has been your most proud moment? If it could be related to your art, your career, it could not. Give me my most bit. proud moment mm -hmm. would be personal because no one was there to see it. But mm -hmm. um, the day that I. When to get mental help. <laughs> cool. I'm not even, I, I can say that laughingly, but that was very serious. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm very proud of that. Yes. Because if I hadn't gone and got mental help, I might not actually be talking right now. So. Mm. Or even here, so it's cool. You would be mute. <laughs> <laughs> I would just not be present anymore. I would just be gone. Oh, okay. Um, I see. So that was a proud moment. And then mm -hmm. when I got all the, my friends to read my graphic novel in front of a crowd, as they played That's their own recently. characters. Yeah. Recently, they show exactly. you to the magnet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh -huh. it was five people that I knew very well. I knew their lives and their history, and their, their history was present in my book. And they actually read it in front of everybody. And they, so cool. It was like so special to see them do that. Mm, nice. Um, who do you admire? The older I get, the less I admire anybody. That's a good one. <laughs> I like some people. Uh -huh. <laughs> anybody who stands up and does what they want to do, even mm -hmm. when it's the hard thing to do in the circumstances of their lives. Okay. And we're almost done with these questions, and we'll go out and Are these answers some. okay? Are they too short? No, they're good. I've got a lot to work with here, especially if I can transpose some of the disc. Yeah, I'll give it to you. And then, um, what are your ingredients for the romant for a most, most romantic evening? Oh. <laughs> Give me your ingredients. What we God, it depends on the mood. There, you know, there are many levels of romance for me. What's important? What do you have to have around you? Okay. Uh, Dildo, strap. <laughs> <laughs> good lighting. Good lighting, good. Maybe a, a joint. Yeah. Um, does that'll do. <laughs> good light. Does the romantic evening always have to transpire? In your house, in your bed, and you're going to be somewhere else. I recently. I've romantic outside, definitely. Yeah, I recently had a, one of the most romantic evenings I've ever had in my life at the Metropolitan Opera <laughs> in New York. I can imagine that. Uh -huh. the oh my evening God. Evening in the air. Yeah. Like, you're with the right person. Uh -huh. and all that sort of thing. So I just don't want you to think of environment. Terms of the Environment's bedroom. important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your environment. Okay. Anything where you feel comfortable with yourself and somebody else, and it feels intimate. Mm -hmm. Is there any inside. place you can think of where you would like to be in a situation like that, offhand? Down by the ocean, mm -hmm. the wind blowing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. something girly like that. Okay. <laughs> and um, what's next for you? Uh, more what graphic novel on? stuff, more comic strips. Mm -hmm. um, they're getting funnier, yeah. which is really cool. Mm -hmm. It started so very serious about this, you know, like mm -hmm. a mentally disturbed child, and now it's, well, it's just still about a mentally disturbed child, but it's more funny. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I'll give you my latest comic strip. I'll just tell you what it is. Yeah. So Frank the Bear, my mm -hmm. character, yeah. Fuzzy Bear, mm -hmm. says, I'm going to get into S&M. Oh. So he goes to the <laughs> Citadel, uh, walks inside, yeah. sees the S&M daddy, and he's like, I want to get into S&M. Yeah. He says, well, looks down at the bear and says, well, you need to figure out what your role is. Mind you, he's a teddy bear. He's all sewn up and looks kind of fucked up. <laughs> um, he goes and sits down in the lounge, looks around, figures mm -hmm. it out. He says, I got it. He looks over and sees all these people in cages, and he runs over. And he unlocks them all real quick and opens them up and says, You're free to go! Run! Run! Uh -huh. And the SM daddy walks over and says, sort of shakes his head and he goes, I'm sorry, I think I misunderstood the assignment. <laughs> 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 yeah. oh, so that's, that's Frank fun. the Bear's s and experience. Cool. And you're doing a collaboration with Rick? We are. Cool, that looks good. Rick, Rick Worley. Uh -huh. 
is yeah. um, the teddy bear, hot bear on bear action, where they uh -huh. have a duel to the death, and it's very cute. He has a fondness for bears, too? He has a, a, a teddy bear in his comic strip, and so do I. Do you ever take in stray bears? I, I, someone died and left me a couple of the teddy bears. Uh, I think it could be a current trend. <laughs> and you, you still have them? Of course. Okay. If someone just... leaves you your teddy bear, you accept That's it. That's just a personal <laughs> question because I, I have a treasure that you're describing mm. to the T. Oh, really? Uh, that s someone died and left me and their left teddy, you bear. teddy bear. Yeah, and you got to keep it. Uh huh? Yeah. But I would, I'm the type who would give someone Something who someone who had more of appreciation for it than myself, uh. Uh -huh, than myself, and you're describing that the bear, uh, kind of tattered and stuff like that, mm -hmm. to the T. You know which bear I'm talking I'm about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, I always I always, I always regretted not taking that from his house uh -huh. after he died. I have it. It's like just it's shoved just in the corner the most of in, in fantastic uh, stuff. It's almost it's like meant for you. I will take an Austrian bear so and care for old. them. It's the cockat teddy bear. It's so I will give him a great home. Yeah. Oh. He can hang out with this fucked up soul here. Uh, They'll be friends. This one looks like it's almost sewn together. Kind of like looks like kind of like the bear. Well, it kind of looks like this. I can't. Yeah, it looks so. like the one in the piece. <laughs> so I don't know how to sew them. I have some yeah. other dead people's bears. Oh cool. I have I plenty of dead bears. <laughs>